Hello, this is Jeff. We are back again with another set of Haynes Creek Killing. Actually, it wasn't too long when the last set ended. Like, a few minutes before. <laughs> At the time of this recording. God, okay. Making dumb mistakes is the reason why I'm stalling myself by accident, mind you. Okay, here we go. It's like, where's the unlock thing? Okay, we have this. Lockbox? Nope. You pick that up. You take that. Hello? I was about to say. Um... I would love to read this, but apparently I can't? Okay, here we go. It's like, what's going on? My head hurts. My tire's flat and the phone's not working. Is someone trying to stop me from leaving Kane's Creek? Am I close to discovering something? Oh god, I thought he was the one. I was wrong. He's not the killer. He's not. I mean, your tires look fine to me. <laughs> Am I going to find out that my tires are flat? God, but this is the mission trail. I don't know how some of these things are optional. Apparently this is optional, but uh, what's the button for? There's a button on that? Where's this? Actually, you know what? Think from that spoiler guide that Walker I used. I know what that is. He's on to me, and I had to hide the key in one of the drains by the roadside. You'll never find... This is what the roadside was for. Uh... May 19th, 1997. Ever since I received the message of the key, I've been following this anonymous person blindly. What a fool I have been. I need to revisit my investigation notes and see if I might have missed anything important. I looked through the alibis recorded by Sheriff Howard. There were six pre-interviews, Charles, Matthew, Bernard, Dorothy, Mary, and Derek. Then I noticed it. One of them is lying. It is recorded that there was an event, yet I remember reading somewhere about it being cancelled. Where did I read again? I can't seem to remember. Oh my god, I just realized that E and that the E in all of the killer's messages is slightly off in comparison to all of the other letters. If I can find that typewriter, I can find who killed Vivian. The E in all of the killer's messages is slightly off in comparison to all the other letters. Find the typewriter, find the killer. That's Steve Moss's story. But what a... Here's what's uh, annoying me right now. What about the... Uh... Father Calvin came to us, everything closed, packaged to itself, I think. May God bless you. Dear Trisha, I've grown to learn about my birth parents. I feel as if the great veil has been lifted. Please believe me when I say do not kill your mother. Fraud investigation. Rhett letter to Henry. Oliver's letter to Dorothy. Events cancel. Office of Church Haven. Dear Mr. Oliver Gibson, we regret to hear that Moth will not be joining any part of the annual religious gathering event from June 18th to 23rd in South York. 
saying that he was not feeling well. I assume he has also informed you about this last minute change. Please send him our regards. Oh. Okay. And then here, he said he was at the annual religious. That's his lie. Okay, so, um, still does not give me what her, uh, you know. If it's not her birthday, what is it? I don't know, I'm just trying to see. Maybe if I put it upside down, but a five doesn't make sense for that. Neither does a two. The six could be read as a nine. Okay, but um, I'm starting to lean more heavily on Father Matthews being the killer. It's, well, I'll go after my conclusions of my thoughts before. Because unfortunately I think, yeah, you want, I'll, I'll stop there, but Payne's Creek killing... I want to see if I can find a hint involving this particular chest. Okay, someone saw a red box in the tree trunk. Can someone please give me any kind of hint on how to unlock the red box? There's a mention later down the line about a game that two members of the town engaged in, which involved the red box. Call any sort of thing people talking about the red box. Okay. Um, what is it can I do that I can do now? You know what? I can probably get rid of these chest pieces. All these photos. Um I do want to look at the locked box again. The letter the letter box in the in the Anne's courtyard. Because I have yet to figure out how to... I guess in the meantime, if I come across a drain... <laughs> he said he hit it. I'm just like, where? Because mind you, that first drain that I opened was like... The only one I had noticed, and then now there was another one. I'm like, damn it. Okay, there's going to be multiples of them. He's at the roadside, right? So I don't have to check inwards in here. There's nothing else in this glove compartment. I have to read, read, reread Stephen Moss's diary or notepad. 
to see what he said about where he hid the... If he said anything more specific besides... What's the button for? One of the drains by the side. One of the drains by the roadside. I'm very confused though, because I thought the desk drawer in Bernard Hopkins' house required access to the letterbox. Okay, well... <laughs> I'm literally... I was wondering if, like, will I be able to see... I'm just gonna open every single one, but... Will I even be able to see if there is a key in the drain if I looked like so? Yeah, I'm not sure if I can actually tell. <laughs> Don't mind me, just opening all the drainage here. Just a reporter, just cleaning out the gutter. Don't mind me. Okay, that's the one we opened up before. Um, let's go see about the hidden button. At the church. I'm like, <laughs> also keeping my eyes peeled. I know I just went past, but I just want to... <laughs> By the roadside. Okay, well we're, well, we're no longer on the roadside, so... Not an issue. Oh, that, I almost did that very smoothly. So this I know because I peeked it. Is it this? Oh, it is different. Here? Where did I open? I did peek at the spoiler part of the tag. Um, um, oh wait. Uh, I need a key. I need a key, which is probably in the drain somewhere. I need a key, it's in the drain somewhere. <laughs> I'm actually trying to remember what point does the certain end game event happen. I am trying to remember what this game was. I mean, it can't be... It can't be how to find the boss, because that just doesn't make sense. Hold on. Unless that was it. Steven Moss. Puzzle. In that p there was a puzzle that she received from Matthew when she first started working at the mansion. Sort of a birthday gift for her. In that puzzle, Sophia was to visit both hers and Matthew's favorite locations at Payne's Creek. Each location lies a clue that Matthew had written on the wall of the building exterior. The clues, when put together, would point her to the location of the gift. I thought that was a neat idea.
but the bridge is not going to have any sort of number associated with it. Okay, so I think I need to find this key. You hit it once, one of the roadside drains. Um, I've yet to find it. <laughs> what about Bernard's thing? I swear to God, I'm going to look up Bernard's. I'm not- oh wait, I'm not on the roadside anymore. What am I doing? Just heading back to the church is what I'm doing. I don't know if you can hear me click, but that was just me going, did I miss something here? Okay, and is this leading back? I'm like, I'm like, there has to be drains somewhere that I did not search yet. Ah. I guess you had your own wrench or something. This is the one we opened before. Open this one. God, I feel like it's going to be so easy for me to just miss this drainage system. See, I'm at the point where I'm so afraid of missing because there's optional things here, right? I don't want to come to the point where I can't unlock certain things, but I think I remember what exactly it was that was the uh, end point of the game. Considered roadside? I assume not. What drain am I missing? There's no drain here, is there? No? Okay, just making sure. There's no numbers or anything written on this. Oh, I thought that was a drain. I was like, what's this? I'm just trying to think, what roadside have I not visited yet? Look at this one. I mean, okay, it's not going to be in the pipe. I can't imagine the developers doing that. 
think I've been down this side. I don't know if there's like one location for this thing to be. Okay, I'm back, it's back to the hospital. Okay, what am I missing? I know it's not back there because I looked, I know I looked, I know I looked for the drain over there. I mean, on one hand, I want to say this shouldn't be too hard to miss, but at the same time, I don't trust myself not to do that for not that not to happen. Oh boy! Oh, I keep seeing the ones I've already opened. I'm like, is this? Nope. Give me reprieve. I mean, this is not a roadside. I know, but. God, those trees. Those trees are so loud. Okay. By the church, you say? Right by the church. <laughs> I did miss it before too. Let's see if I can do this. I did it really smoothly last time. Oh, auto saving. <laughs> This is the only thing I can think it can go to. I don't match. I can close that. No. Uh oh. This seems pretty endgame to me. That seems pretty endgame to me. Yeah. I just... Bernard Hopkins' desk drawer is eluding me. And I'm very confused about it. It says, I mean, the main issue is That seems super endgame to me. That's, um, I am a bit worried. 
Because I thought something else was endgame, but... Unless I... <laughs> okay, hold on. Bernard... Bernard's... I need to look up Bernard's um, thing again, because clearly... I don't know why that's eluding me so much. How to unlock the desk, the drawer of the desk in the study room. There's a clue in one of the drawers of the study room desk. However, one of the darts fell to the floor. Maybe there's a photo somewhere that of the position of all five darts. Oh, wait. But it says access to letterbox 201 and ends in. Letterbox 201? That doesn't seem right. Because I think when the, when I read that as all five darts, I thought that meant the red dart. Like all five red darts. But if it's talking about all five darts as in all five darts on the board, why is it talking about access to letterbox 201 and ends in? That has nothing to do with anything. Okay. So, I technically have the clue then of the, the picture of the dartboard. But how am I still not getting... I'm not getting the answer though. Or I'm not getting a four digit combination. I'm literally prepared to look it up. Because everything I've thought of so far is clearly wrong. Unfortunately, the red box, I haven't... I know about the game to find the box, but there's nothing about the clue. Yo. I read this already. Yeah, and he just talks about Vivian, Vivian, Vivian. So track yellow darts points from the red darts total. Okay. You can here clearly see two, seven. So that's subtracting nine. Because those are just single digits. The other one was on the double 18. So the... Because this one's 60 here, that's triple points. This is a double. So what is it? I wrote 36. And the bullseye is a 50. So how in the world do I get a hundred and whatever? Or how do I get more? I, how do I get four digit code? Okay, so I looked up the code for the red box because I don't know. I feel like I came across everything already. Is that a book? No, that's just a random book I can read. Um. Okay, I need to figure out Bernard's. The clue says to subtract the yellow points from the red. The total of red is 146. Okay, so that's not including the 500 whatever score. Keep in mind that each color needs three darts to cal calculate a total. And you... Okay, so I was calculating it with the 501, but they literally just want the... <laughs> they literally just want the... Without the score 501, but it's by the points. I think that's what I was getting thrown off by. 
So 6, 11, 14, so 146. 146 minus 9. So this will be a 1. Am I doing this right? 146, 135. Is that right? No, I didn't think so. Unless it is plus the 500, but then I already tried that. It's possible to get 36 from on this dart. This is very confusing. Maximum score with one dart without doubles, triples, and bowls is 20. The maximum score with one dart without doubles, triples, and the bowl is 25, i.e. around the ring. The maximum score with one dart without triples and the bowl is 40? What? The maximum score without with one dart without triples is 50. I was confused because the rule next to the dartboard specifically says the player's total is 501 minus 146, 355. But when the devs use total in the note, they mean 146. Wait, it's 146? Oh, wait, it's 137. Wait, what was I doing? Oh, sorry, it is supposed to be 137. I put 135, that's minus 11. Okay. Yeah, you know what? The dartboard rules is what threw me off. That was the confusion there. Looks like a desk key. All keys found. No, 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 no. Oh. When the police reported that Vivian was murdered, I was floored. I still don't know what to do. My mind is blank. All I can think is, how did it happen? How can Vivian be dead? Everyone's mourning about Vivian's death. People are coming or calling in to express their condolences. Charles hasn't been out of his room for days. And Trisha's crying her heart out. Dorothy has been assigning busy work to all the mansion employees, hoping that it would take their minds off of Vivian's death. Samuel... Our security guard has been reviewing all the tapes of the past two weeks for any suspicious activity. I wish I could be of any of help. Scott was just apprehended for the murder of Vivian. Is that true? No one would have thought of that. I could never, ever believe that Scott would be capable of killing someone, let alone Vivian. Yet it makes me so mad I feel confused. Trisha was admitted to the hospital today. She had a nervous breakdown after finding out that Scott could be her mother's killer. Her condition has been getting worse over the past few weeks, and no one has been able to properly help her. Charles finally decided to seek help from the hospital. Matthew never believed that his son killed Vivian. He hired some fancy lawyer to defend him. Scotty's been released on bail today. It's beyond ridiculous. I don't think Scott should have been released at all, despite the inefficient evidence. He killed Vivian. I know that he's guilty. Everyone knows it. They should have gone ahead and prosecuted him. The maids were cleaning the mansion when they found some stuff belonging to Vivian, a key and some stationaries. I asked Charles what he'd like to do with him, but he told me to take care of it myself. I brought them back to my place. Vivian's death has caused lots of grief to everyone, especially Charles. After hearing how heartbroken Charles was two nights ago, I can't bear to see him suffer anymore. Scott should pay for what he did. So he killed Scott. Like I thought. Uh, damn. A desk key found in Bernard's house. The mansion. The mansion. 
I was like, what what desk key haven't I looked at? The the one in the mansion. <laughs> yeah, you know it's endgame when like you've literally wrecked your brain on all the puzzles that you do have left, and you're just trying to figure out where the hell am I supposed to be putting this? Oh thank god the mansion's not too far. Um But yeah, I think we've clearly got an idea of who who has done what. <sighs> I'm just wondering, what happened to Bernard? Seriously, what happened to Bernard? Oh wait, <laughs> I keep thinking the stairs is over that way, but really just here. Okay, so I found all the keys, which means there's nothing else that needs to be unlocked at this point. Oop, okay. No! It's just a diary. Okay, January 2nd, 1995. Although we live in the same house, Charles and I hardly speak to each other. I know that he's been feeling guilty ever since his affair, but that was 20 years ago. It's high time I forgive him out loud. Oh, this is 1995. Next, I need to work things out with Trisha. I've been objecting her relationship with Scott for quite some time. In doing so, Trisha has been avoiding me. I haven't been a good mother, but I want to be there whenever she needs me from now. From now. I just want things to go back the way they were. Maybe it helps if you don't murder your mother-in-law, but okay. January 12th, the agency has arranged for a new guy to help me. His name is Owen Smith. Quite a young man for what he has accomplished. During our meeting, Owen asked me many things, as if he was interviewing me. The brief introduction turned out to be hours long. However, by the end of it, he said he has everything he needed and will get things moving right along. I have a good feeling about him. I'm sorry. Owen called to meet with me today. He had the papers ready for me to sign. He said that the location of the exhibition has been approved. All we need is the down payment. That's great. I signed the papers almost immediately. After that, I informed our accountant, Helen, to transfer the money from the Roberts Relief Fund since the hospital won't be needing it for a while. Owen's been a great help since we brought up the idea of an art gallery for the public. I'm not sure if things could have gone so quickly if it had been some other agent. I owe him that much. The art gallery will open in three months. I'm so excited about it. We've had received most of the art, artwork from the contributors and artists. All I need is to ask Charles if he would be willing to donate some of his paintings. If this exhibition succeeds, it would be good for us and for Paints Creek. I haven't felt this alive in a very long time. I have purpose now. When was this, uh... Sorry. She said... She grabbed it from the hospital relief because they wouldn't need it. I informed the accountant Helen to transfer money from the hospital relief fund, May 12th, 1995. Honestly, her story ended on a rather blah note. May 12th, 1995. What was the document about... Fraud investigation. I would like to thank you for your contribution. However, there have been reports regarding mishandling of funds. Since a near sum of 160000 Okay, no, wait, this is 1993. Okay. Sorry, I just saw the May, but 1995 is later. When did the hospital close? <laughs> hospital closed, no, the hospital would have closed a lot later, wouldn't it have? Yeah, this is 1996.
Okay. So basically she saw the signs that it was going to be closing and just used the money from the relief fund. Okay. Um, right. So this I'm done with. Man, that this ends up ended up confusing me because I'm like, okay, I guess so the 501 thing I have to delete and whatever. Because yeah, I would, hmm. Because I was adding the scores to 501. That's why. Otherwise, I would have gotten it. But I confused myself with all this information that I apparently did not need. I don't think I need this anymore. There's going to be no emails or passwords. There's still this. Is there an E in this? Nope, and the typewriter is not. I mean, we know. We know what it is. Okay, I'm hoping that desk drawer will have what's in this locked box. Oh, no, wait. You know what? I read it. I think I read it somewhere. On on the on the guides or like the comment sections and stuff like that. <laughs> I read it, I forgot it, then I remembered it. <laughs> I mean, as much as Vivian wants to be tried. She did, um, she... One, one was a third degree murder because they didn't purposely look to kill Sophia, at least I hope it wasn't. Um, but the other... The other... Magdalena? Definitely that was... planned. <laughs> so... Not exactly the most uh, heartwarming person there is. So apparently, the code is on the church or something, which one two zero three. So, because this is what I was worried about, like, because the person was talking about the game that, that, involving the red box. But the only, because Stephen Moss talks about it, but he's talking about the location of the box itself. Um, which one was it? Was it this one? No, it's not this one. It's this one. The clues when put together, Matthew's favorite locations. Oh, Matthew's favorite places. Places, plural. That's why. This is why I got thrown off by. I mean, yeah, I guess the church. <laughs> I guess the church would be his other favorite place. Because the only thing he talked about specifically was the the moon cafe which i need to to look there but i didn't think the code i thought for some reason i, I thought it was gonna be like in the telegram or something that he sent to her today's sophia's day off yeah see here he talks about the moon cafe it just because he's just associated with the church i wouldn't assume one two zero three yeah, because that's what one of the... That wasn't... It wasn't in the guide I used. That was me specifically looking up. Red box. Pain Street killing. And someone said, Look outside the church. The code. Because that's where, where it will be. 
But it makes sense. Now they think about it. Cause I honestly, yeah, honestly, I would. I don't think I wouldn't have gotten that. Um, I would've been stuck because it just wouldn't have occurred to me. Right. I guess the church would be his one of his favorite places. Oh god, do I remember the code? <laughs> I came all this way. Uh, one... One, two... Zero, five? Damn it. One, two... I can't remember. Oh my god. One two zero three. Being silly. Oh, oh boy. That is a ring. Dear Sophia, please wait for my return. Love, Matthew. Every moment I spent with you was like a beautiful dream come true. Happy birthday. Dear Sophia, it's been quite a while since I last wrote to you. I've been busy. I hope you are doing well. Father Calvin has been guiding me how to be a man of God, to grow my faith in the Lord and my compassion for people. When I see those who have no beds to sleep upon and no food to eat, my heart goes out to them. I wish I could do more. Father Calvin has been handing me more and more responsibilities. It seems like he might be retiring soon. He even gave me his favorite desk in the study room. I've changed its code to 0318, the day he first came to the orphanage. Paints Creek has been very quiet recently. Nothing much goes on in this small town. Oliver is still... Haynes Creek event photographer Charles and Vivian are running their business as usual. Sorry, I'm going to write down 0318. Trisha's seven now. She's really smart and loves to hang out with her dad. Dorothy is the same old Dorothy that we all love. Bernard's still the reliable butler. I don't think he'll ever be replaced. As for me, well, I'm still here waiting for your return. Do you remember the church attic? Well, I spend most of my free time there now doing wood carving. It helps me relax. Hey, I even got pretty good at it. Sometimes I'll think of you and how we spent our time together. I'm not sure if you ever realized how I felt towards you. Since you left, I kept writing these letters, but I never mail them. And to be honest, it's because I don't have a clue where you may be staying right now. At the same time, writing to you has made me feel that we are still close to one another. Today marks the sixth year that you left Paints Creek I still don't know why you left. All I want to say is, take care. This will be my last letter. One day I hope to see you again. Oh no. <laughs> is the only thing I can read? Oh no. that also I'm sorry but did Bernard get away with this is he dead like what happened
Okay. So, hmm. What do I open first? I'm not conflicted now. Because I think I know what the endgame event is. But what I initially thought started it may not actually be it. Hmm. I think that's everything for everyone else. I'm now just left with... Man, it honestly would not have occurred to me to think, yes, the church is his favorite place. <laughs> there also happens to be an axe up there. I did see that axe. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. <sighs> See, I don't know what is endgame here. We now have... Someone came to Payne's Creek, she cannot know. Okay, I'm hoping... Okay, I think this is endgame. Okay. Zero, three... One. May 13th, 1995. I visited Scott today. I couldn't believe what he said. How could Sophia be dead? How could Andrew, Henry, and Vivian have killed her? Did Dorothy know? How about Wanda or Charles? Did they know? Why didn't anyone tell me? I visited Sophia's grave today. It was just a wooden cross that Scott made. There is no name on it. I placed some flowers in front of it. She always had the liking for flowers. We had mass today. Vivian and Henry were there. Andrew, as usual, didn't come. All I could think of whenever I look at them is whether they actually killed Sophia or not. As they praised the Lord throughout the sermon, I felt sick to the stomach. I couldn't bear to see their faces. What should I do now? I know I should forgive them, but it's so difficult. I'm dying inside. I wish I never visited Scott. I wish I never heard what he said. I wish I could just forget everything. I need to talk to Andrew. I need to confess. And I'm gonna assume that talk with Andrew did not go well. Dearest Matthew is from Calvin Bennett. I'm writing this letter to let you know what happened to Sophia. My days are almost up and I feel you have the right to know what happened nine years ago. In 1974, when Vivian Roberts underwent a C-section to deliver Trisha, she was told that she could not give birth anymore. Vivian broke down mentally and was hospitalized. Sophia was tasked with taking care of the newly born Trisha and helping Charles Roberts. Charles, who was Facing a lot of difficulty and pressure, unfortunately found comfort in Sophia. They had an affair. A boy was born. A few months later, Vivian found out about the relationship. She was furious. Feeling threatened by the illegitimate boy, Vivian kicked Sophia and the baby out of Paints Creek. Everyone believed that. But the truth is, I took the boy and put him in St. Patrick's Orphanage. I named him Scott. Time flies. He's going to be 10 soon. I pray that you can bear the responsibility of raising him. He does not need to know about his real parents. It's all in the past. Instead, give him a new start. I sincerely hope that you can forgive me for hiding this from you for so long. Calvin Bennett. So he just thinks she disappeared. 
Dear Matthew, this is from Sophia Miller. It's been more than two years since I started working at the mansion. I like this place a lot. The people here are nice to me. Thank you for your letter. Although I cannot be there with you for your missionary work, I will pray for your success. You are always the noble one. Do you remember the wishes we made when we were at the orphanage? Yours was to help the unfortunate. Mine was not to be poor. Well, I did not expect an opportunity to knock so soon. Maybe heaven is helping me. With all that has happened these past few months, my wish might just come true. I'd love to tell you more about it, but it can wait until you're back. Things might be different by then. I hope it will be for the better. Love always, Sophia Miller. All letters found. Okay. Okay, so the, <laughs> this kind of confuses me when there's like an envelope. Huh? I was like, why? Okay. Yeah. This is uh, where <laughs> certain end game events come in. I hope I can get through this. I don't know how... Uh... June 6th, 1995. I met Andrew in the evening at his house. He was hallucinating when we met, saying that he's seen Sophia everywhere, that he's a sinner, and that he should die. But I didn't mean to kill him. My hands are still shaking. June 30th, 1995. Dr. Johnson came. He was surprised to see me. He tried to justify, saying it wasn't his fault, that he was only carrying the baby and had nothing to do with Sophia's death. When I revealed the truth about Magdalen, his face turned white. He didn't expect anyone to know the truth. He deserved to die. Okay. July 19. 1995, just like the doctor, Vivian came alone. Instead of feeling guilty, she called Sophia a bitch who destroyed everything she had. I didn't feel any sign of remorse, feeling of guilt, or repentance from her at all. So I gave her time to express herself, and then I killed her. It's all over now. Why am I not at peace? There's this nosy investigator in town. I thought that if I led him to believe that Bernard killed Vivian, he just might believe it. But I made the mistake of trying to mislead him. Now he's suspecting me of being the killer. He has to die. Cannot save from now on. Ooh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What was that? What the hell? Oh, okay. Okay. Ghost girl. <laughs> he locked the door. <laughs> I was not expecting the door to be closed. Is a uh... I don't know where I am though. I don't know if I have time to look on the map. 
If I go this way, this should lead to the hospital, right? <sighs> My heart is pounding right now. What the? Oh! I was not expecting the gate to be locked. Hey, ghost girl, you're gonna help me or not? Yeah, he's right behind me. Ugh. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I'm stuck. There's no way to avoid this either. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I literally have no idea. This is the way I came in, right? Yeah, I'm gonna die for sure. I don't know if you could continue up to that certain point. Oh, you're here the entire time. I totally missed you. Sounds like he's right on top of me. Okay, I saw her on that side. I get it. What? I thought... Yeah, I don't... I'm so confused. It looked like she was leading me to the stairs. I don't know if I can do that again. Where are you? You were supposed to be in Payne's Creek for a day or two. It's been over a week now. We are worried about you. Please report back at Urgent Chief. Does that mean I have to do the whole thing again? Because if that's the ending I'm going to get, that's the ending I'm going to get. I'm not doing playing the entire game. Have you seen her? there was something I could do there. Trade B, rank constable. Hilarious. Okay. Let me see. If I continue, where is it continuing me from?
Okay. Continues me from the church. That's a good start. Oh my god. Now. Okay. This is not locked. This is not locked. Okay. Oh, wait, what am I doing? <clears throat> so something I'm going to do. I'm going to open this. Okay. And then I'm going to exit and then enter back in. So I saved. Because no matter what, I think we're just going to have to go through those other, that other content again. Actually, maybe I could just, maybe. Loading. Now, I swear it was leading me. Because I imagine the front door for the hospital is also going to be closed. At least I can do this again to try to get the escape ending. Actually, what pictures do I have? Read this. Read this. Okay, technically, okay, so I already got the achievement. But, you know what? This is gonna be dumb. But, I'm going to exit and enter. Enter and exit. Exit and enter again. Yeah, I was right the first time. <laughs> Just so all the contents are being recorded, it's in there, because I don't know whether, just because I have the achievement, if the game's going to take it as such, because it saves every single time you enter and exit a place. Auto-saving? <clears throat> Excuse me. I have like... <sighs> yeah, because... I imagine, like, I couldn't imagine there's no way the game's going to make me do it all over again. Because doing the investigation is pretty lengthy on its own. Finding clues, figuring out certain things. Um, I will just cut apart, cut out, cut apart. <laughs> Ooh, definitely not the wording I want to go for. Cut out the part about all of this because I think, oh, I can skip it. Okay. So apparently that is Sophia's ghost. To, oh, I didn't even see her. She's like enough in the shadows that I could not tell at all. Okay, so she's leading me to exit out. I'm just very confused about the part. at the hospital. Unless, was I supposed to grab the tree or something? <laughs> Bob Matthews is like, how does she know? <laughs> how does reporter is getting ahead, so far ahead of me? What the 
hell? He's already here. So I have to check here again because... I don't understand. There's nothing here. Wait, that's where I was supposed to be? I was just supposed to stand there the entire time? Okay, I'm sorry, but that's... To Jen, I'm glad you made it back safely and uncovered the truth about Payne's Creek killings. Good job. Your story will be on the front page of tomorrow's newspaper. Please submit the following information as well as a photo for your article as soon as possible. P.S. By the way, we found out who hired P.I. Stephen Moss. Who killed Vivian Roberts? Matthew Brooks. Axe. I think this is a nice photo of her. This is where everything stems from. And it's injustice. <laughs> to Dorothy Patterson, my name is Janet Kelly. I'm here to inform you on behalf of P.I. Steve Moss that the secrets of the Paines Creek killings have come to light. He is, however, missing. The police are searching for his whereabouts. While preparing for, preparing for this letter, I could not help but wonder, what if Charles didn't commit adultery? What if Vivian had not confronted Sophia? What if Magdalena hadn't insisted on the son to continue the family line? Could things have turned out differently? In hindsight, it's easy to say what they should not have done. Sometimes it's hard to make the right choices in life, doesn't it? Did Derek really hate Scott so much that it led to his death? Could Matthew not have sought revenge for Sophia? And why did Henry Johnson choose to be an accomplice in Magdalena's death? The truth was that everyone made a choice they think was the best, but not necessarily the right one. This made me realize the following. We have the freedom to say or do whatever we want, but there are consequences following our actions. The bigger the mistake, the harsher the consequences. It was true that Charles was Theo's affair was wrong, but Vivian had a choice, either to confront Charles about it or to get out with Sophia. She chose the latter. Just as Vivian made her choice, so did Andrew, Henry, and Matthew. In the end, they all had to face the consequences. One thing puzzled me is Steve and I were both trying to find out the truth. Why was I safe, not him? I hope I can find an answer someday. Till then, this is the story of Payne's Creek, August 12, 1999. Imagine people are going to be like, like this photo isn't a Vivian Roberts. <laughs> um. But I mean, frankly, Vivian had killed someone before, so. Vivian had killed someone before, so I'm just like, I, I'm not too. <laughs> I do, I do feel bad for Charles, just because his entire family, his entire family is dead, so dead. Um, and this is great A plus, aka I didn't die. <laughs> um, that's it. I do not like how, so I was supposed to go up there and I was supposed to stand there of all things. Which is really, so what screwed me over, well one was the fact that I was one health hit down, but it's like, how would I have thought to stand there? 
Because of course, if it sounds like he's getting close, I'm going to run away. I'm not going to just stand there. Um... Obviously, some sort of banding happened with the hospital at the end, because suddenly he was right there. It was like, um, okay, why, how come you're suddenly here? Um, I, um, mm, because Bernard was the one who killed Scott, and at least I think that at least the truth has come out now. But, man. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm still trying to decide whether Charles, it was better if Charles knew that Scott was his son. Oof. Well, actually, if anything, if he didn't know, he definitely is going to know now after that, after that newspaper article, because all of the truth is revealed. Um... Yeah, so he's gonna know in the end. But Bernard, Bernard, I hope that that knife is still there. So they better be able to find to find his um to to charge him with murder. I hope. I hope. What else? Yeah, I you know what? I'm not a fan of that. Like I thought I was gonna be getting away in my car, but I guess this is the best way. Because Matthew Brooks, there's no reason he couldn't have just run away. This way he was um, quote unquote caught. <laughs> Sophia just needed the, all, the, all the madness to stop. Yeah, but Trisha, Trisha was not a good person. Trisha willingly poisoned, killed her mother-in-law. And... Ugh. And I don't know about the, I'm, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to like, I guess she knew the hospital or she was planning on closing the hospital, hence why she just used the money from the Roberts Relief Fund, which still not a good look for someone doing everything to be so philanthropic for the good of the community. Really is to make herself look good. At least that's what this, that's the sense I'm getting. But I got it. I also get the sense that there's just a very, very high standard that she has to to live up to, whether it be her mother-in-law's or her I guess. Well, no, her own lineage made it sound like she was from. It almost sounded like ra a rags to riches story, if I'm remembering correctly from the diary entries. I there's too much information, so lost some of the information is a bit jumbled. So in the end, the spoiler was. That after listening to the tape recording device, I saw that picture and then said something about the the red bar for health. So I was thinking, I'm like, okay, so is Matthew Reed's the killer? Which at first I thought I couldn't believe it because like he wouldn't kill Scott. But then as I put the pieces together, that wait, maybe he didn't kill Scott, but someone else did because they thought he killed Vivian. Then it's like, oh, this basically solidifies Matthew Reed. But I think that at that point in the game, um, the, the truth is already becoming a bit more clear. Either way, that was the Paints Creek killing. Ugh. This is, um, I'm trying to decide whether or not this is a live streaming game or not. Uh, definitely around the end, it's like, it's like any any point and click adventure. If you miss one clue, you're going to be scratching your head, wondering what uh, things you missed. There's a lot of things that are there's a lot of things that are I guess optional because the ways like in order to get the drawer, you need to get the code for the red box in the tree trunk. But then I was able to access that the secret room in the in the church before that. I mean, you see the bloody axe in the typewriter, you know, I'm like, oh, this is endgame. Let's uh let's do everything else beforehand. Like you technically don't even need to finish off Bernard's story at all. But either way, that was it for this game. 
So thank you for liking if you like. Thank you for commenting if you commented. Thank you for subscribing if you subscribed. Thank you for favoriting if you favorited. Thank you for simply clicking on this video. Until next time, guys. See ya. Thank you.